Kick it! You've, have you been drinking green tea all day? I've been drinking green tea all day. <laughs> oh, Let's go. Shit. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. This guy's pumped. This guy's pumped. We can't hold him back for much longer, folks. Welcome to the Next Level Nerd Movie Podcast, where we share our love of movies with you. Most of the time, we discuss, defend, and promote movies we enjoy that weren't considered critically or commercially successful, but sometimes we just ramble. And to be honest, that's what most of this movie is. Um, just the ramblings of yeah. a wonderful, wonderful person in Mark Borchardt. Um, but yeah, that's my ramble for now. Listeners, you can join us at facebook.com slash next level nerd. And you can get your hands on a smorgasbord of curated nerd news, memes, and other amazingly fun life-changing content now let's jump in and nerd out i'm justin and he's nico rocco yeah uh... this week nico we're talking about american movie american movie and just I, so yeah give me your roll go well I, yeah i was just super interested to know your background on this movie because obviously my background just like any other movie um most of the movies i'd heard of before this one i'd never even heard of i was, was unaware of you know walking into it you gave me a little couple tidbits you said i'd love it um so yeah i just i was excited once i got into it was like how the hell did justin know about this movie or how did you know where did this where did you where'd you first see it what's your history so um my history with this movie was i'm i'm the type of person where i used to um i used to use the internet a lot for watching movie trailers like i rarely got to go to the movie theater as much as I wanted to as a kid, even though I did, you know, see a lot of movies and theaters and stuff. But once I found out that there was a movie theater up the road, not too far from me, um, it, it kind of opened up a new world. Like I wanted to, I wanted to go there. I loved everything about movie theaters. I still do. And, um, you know, I'm, I make sure I see like one movie a month now, at least, um, because of movies like this, because, you know, you can use the internet, you can watch trailers to see like what's coming out and the kind of things that are coming out. And, you know, I, I love documentaries. I love, um, character movies, uh, you know, movies about people. And I mean, I'm going to play just a clip here from the movie, um, and you get a sense for, for the type of person Mark Borchardt is. Here we go. I was called to the bathroom, Terry, to Hold take on. care of something. Here we go. I believe it was yesterday. I was called to the bathroom at the cemetery to take care of something. I walked in the bathroom, and in the middle toilet right there, Somebody didn't shit in the toilet. Somebody shat on the toilet. They shat on the walls. They shat on the floor. <laughs> I had to clean it up, man. But before that, for about 10 to 15 seconds, man, I just stared at somebody's shit, man. To be totally honest with you, man, it was a really, really profound moment. So I was thinking, I'm 30 years old, and in about 10 seconds, I got to start cleaning up somebody's shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that right there just gives you gives you an idea of of what this movie is. It's about a guy who's willing to basically do anything and endure um the lowest of the low like the torture of of manual labor just to pursue his dream of getting his movie made. Um and it's you know it's like the it's such a little piece of Americana. Um, my history with this movie, to be perfectly honest with you, 
Um, I can't remember off the top of my head where I first heard of it. Um, I want to say I probably heard of it on like an angry video game nerd move, uh, uh, movie review or something like that. I know I've seen it there. Um, you know, and, but I want to say it was mostly from just watching internet trailers that I saw this. And when it came out, I was like, I'm definitely buying that movie. It looks hilarious. And, you know, so I got the DVD of it and, uh, I just watched the shit out of it because it's hilarious. And every time you watch it, you see something new and, it's just, yeah, it, it, the first time through, I didn't know what to expect, so it was a it was a little bit harder of a watch the first time through. Right, um, almost wasn't sure when to laugh or when you were allowed to laugh because <laughs> it was a lot of it. A lot of the the funny stuff was like, I mean, Depressing. they portray this as this guy's life. This is his his life. It's documentary. Uh, maybe it's a character that he's playing. Kind of gets that like. Napoleon Dynamite meets Bobby's World type, right? Uh, where you get all the, you know, it's set it's set in '99, like present present time or then, yeah, right? It's actually, it came out um, April 13th, uh, 19, or it came out in 1999, yeah. But it was uh, it was um, it was it took place during 1996. So yeah, 1996. Because you get to watch the Green Bay Packers during their Super Bowl run with Brett Favre, right? Like that's right, a whole okay. that's a whole another level of the story. Like, you know, but, where you see his love for football and stuff, and they never even talk about football. You just see him wearing Packers gear and like, right. but all this guy thinks about is film. <laughs> and and it's it's set in '96, but it's in a rural town yeah it makes it feel like it's almost in the 80s because it's so like out of date you know the, the cars are still dated the the outfits the clothes yeah. are still dated um it even is on like a you know shot in like a grainier type fashion where it yeah, looks almost it's, like it's home video ish yeah and it's it's definitely like um Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's definitely like almost a look at like Rust Belt America too. Right. Like, right. you know, how other people live, you know, like these are, these are people that are, you know, trying to do everything they can to succeed and, you know, the challenges they come up against and stuff like that. And so you're instantly rooting for them. The setting reminded me a little bit of what we saw earlier in the year in Slapshot. Where it was, it right. was that kind of a town where it kind of seems like almost out of touch with the rest of the world, like a little right. microcosm of America yeah. at that time. Yeah. So it was actually in, um, you know, Mark's from uh, Northwest Milwaukee um, is where where it's set, um, and you know everybody has that kind of Milwaukee uh, accent. Like you know, there's a lot of uh, Nordish people. <laughs> right. Don <laughs> Chanel. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing there, Don Chanel? Uh. <laughs> but uh, my uh, my stepdad's mom talked like that. She'd be like, oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like my soup, do ya? <laughs> yeah, it's good, huh? <laughs> but, um, yeah, she, uh, or you know the the movie kind of shows you that that other world of kind of like you know for us in like Pittsburgh would be like the Yinzer section of town you know what I mean like right these guys are drinking at the local dive bar because they got to walk there because you know they're they've got two DUIs and the beer's cheap because they've been spending money on lottery tickets and you know different things like that, just living their lives, trying to have fun while also, you know, trying to get ahead in life. Right. So I, you know, I came across this movie, um, just randomly seeing the trailers and then kind of hearing a few, uh, online reviews for it and being like, okay, hell yeah, I'm going, I'm seeing that when it comes out. Um, but I think I missed it and then just ended up buying it on DVD so I could watch it because, 
Yeah, it's one. It's one I, I even for this review, I watched it four times. Um, yeah, and I, I did end up watching it again, and the second time through, you know, like you said, more stuff jumps out at you. It gets <laughs> yeah. funnier and funnier. You know, you're, yeah. you you kind of you're over the. At first, there was a little bit of like, what is going on? So right. it's like I couldn't even focus on what was going on because I was so in awe of what was going on. Right. If that makes any sense at all. But the second time through, I knew it was coming. So it was it was easier to pay attention to what they were saying and what was um, what the story was. Yeah. So. Um, the. Uh, the production company on this one actually um, was uh, Blue Mark Productions, C-100 Film Corporations, and Civilian Pictures. I'm sure those are all, you know, smaller, um, smaller, what do you call it, uh, production companies because there's not very much budget uh, to the film. It's basically just, you know, them filming Mark working and, and him ranting and, and of course his buddy, Mike Shank, who is, uh, Mike Shank is, is such a lovable dummy. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole time you're just like, this guy is hilarious, but he's just so sweet and endearing throughout the whole movie. Yeah. It's just like the really supportive best friend. <laughs> Right. He's yeah. hilarious. And he always has, you know, he's got this shit eating grin. Yeah. You know, he's like. And that mustache. Right. <laughs> so, uh, the, yeah, the hair, the mustaches, the the style in this movie is amazing. Yeah. The uh, the distributors are uh, Columbia, TriStar and Sony Pictures Classics. So, so if you're ever looking for it, it's uh, usually it's playing on on Crackle or stars or some some uh, Sony owned property, um, but yeah, if you ever get a chance to see this one, it is well worth the watch. Um, it's a it's rated R. It's got an hour of a uh, or it's got a runtime of an hour and forty seven minutes, and the critical response on this one, Nico, if you can believe it, is a ninety four percent. Yeah, on that is tomatoes. that is extremely unbelievable. I yeah, I mean, I feel like we've watched movies that that have just gotten destroyed on Rotten Tomatoes, and then you watch something like this that I'd never even heard of, first of all, and it's a it's a good movie, but I don't know, ninety four. Yeah, wow, ninety four, man. I think it's just because you know, obviously, with the critics, it's such a relatable story. Um, and the audience score is a 90%. So, you know, most of the audience, I think, for this movie is people who enjoy seeing, like, movies made about how movies are made. You know, the, there's right. kind of that whole subsection of uh, mov- movies about movies being made, you know. Um, but it's kind of like, too, and correct me if I'm wrong like making fun of this guy at the same time, kind of a little bit, right? I think, or no, is that just me? I don't think it's necessarily making fun of him. I think it's his delivery is absolutely so deadpan. Like when the movie opens and he's opening his bills um, and he's talking about, you know, there's, there's uh, oh, I got this bill. Oh yeah. Fuck. Oh, lawsuit coming up against me right, and then he, right. he's like oh man i've been pre-approved yeah oh i got a master I got a card, master card. <laughs> it's like, i guess life's not he that goes, bad kick fucking ass man i guess sometimes life's not too bad yeah or something like that but it's hilarious just you know and the, the you can see him kind of like playing with his uh like his uncle bill and stuff and uncle bill is a really sad character but the more you watch this movie like the more you kind of see him and mark's relationship you know and how they kind of 
go back and forth and stuff like that. And, you know, how Mark really is like the only person that really hangs out with this dude and spends any times with him and is willing to go so far as to give him a bath. You know, he loves his uncle Bill. Um, But yeah, still it was difficult for me the, the whole way through to, to, pick out if he was doing a character if this was all oh, like, he's definitely not doing a character this is a this is a documentary 100 um, percent documentary yes so it's, it's a, not like it's a, a shtick not like a playing it up for the camera no this is like not this, like a sasha baron cohen where it's like not at all like borat kind of <laughs> no not at all this was this was actually um you know, basically, they just put a camera on him right. and rolled, and it was the main. See, and that's thing. part of what I what I mean when I was talking about watching it the first time, not really knowing what it was. Like, like, are, am I supposed to laugh at the way this guy's dressed? Am I supposed to laugh at how you know f- how funny his life is, or you know his, his quote unquote problems? Right. You know, um, it just was was difficult to interpret first time through second time through i knew that i was able to kind of um really get into him and and laugh at what he was saying and kind of more of of you know appreciate him as a character right so it was um you know as far as awards go and stuff it was given the grand jury prize for a documentary uh at the 1999 sundance film festival um and uh the New York Times uh named it as one of the 1000 greatest movies ever made. <laughs> wow. And, and the International Documentary Association named it as one of the top 20 documentaries of all time. Um you know, the, some of the critical review and stuff uh, Janet Maslin of the New York Times uh, said that the the movie uh, showed his passion uh, insightfully and stirringly, not to mention hilariously. And for that, uh, you know, <laughs> for for I'm sorry, I lost my spot there. Duh. Uh, for anyone wondering where the spirit of maverick independent filmmaking has its source you need to look no further was to the end of her comment um yeah it won uh all kinds of independent film awards uh the satellite awards the sundance awards um film independent spirit awards uh it was nominated and and won tons of stuff so this is this is probably this might be one of the higher rated highest rated movies we've done. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, but I, I mean, it's, I don't I don't know that I necessarily get it. What do you mean? As far as like it being as critically acclaimed or as highly highly thought of. You know, as far as putting it as the top 20 documentaries of, of all time, I feel like that's that might be a little bit of a stretch. But uh, knowing up front that I have no idea what I'm talking about, you know, I'm, just a, <laughs> I'm just a guy, you know. Hey, so I'm sure that the okay. International Documentary Association knows what they're talking about more than me. I'm just Maybe. saying I don't, I don't necessarily know. I don't necessarily get it. I'm not. Well, I'm it. I'm here because I want your opinion, not their opinion. Damn it! I know, I know. I uh, I you know, this is a great movie. It's a fun movie. It's an I, I see it as like an uplifting movie. Um, you know, it's it's a movie of accomplishment and stuff. You know, uh, just incredible. And it was shot for uh. It was shot on a freaking shoestring budget. You know, you could shoot a movie like this on an iPhone now. Um, right. and, but the box office take was 1.2 million. Um, you know, and it it kind of put put them on the map a little bit. Chris Smith and and his wife, uh, or I think it's his wife. 
I'm not sure. She she's the producer uh, that he frequently works with. And Mike Shank, man, what great music! He does the entire soundtrack. Um, they just use his his music. Yeah, that's cool. And I mean, you get you get some excellent excellent tunes out of this movie. He's a pretty incredible guy, Mike Shank. I didn't I, I as I was looking at stuff for this movie, um, Chris Smith. I he recently did a documentary that fire the mm-hmm. greatest party that never happened. Yeah, it was on Netflix, kind of kind of right at the beginning or right at the uh, I don't know beginning of the pandemic. I heard a lot about this that that, that it was a festival that these guys oh were yeah 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 kind of went bottom up and. Um, I didn't get to watch it, but I heard really good things about it. Yeah, um, I think. But that's jumped out because it was something that I had I had heard of recently. Yeah, I think my wife uh, watched that. She got into it. Um, the uh, the taglines for this movie there are sadly none, um, just because uh, there really wasn't you know any budget. <laughs> they just you know, dropped it off at these film festivals, basically, and that's how it kind of took off. The tagline um, should be man. Uh, Mark Borchard says the word man 151 times. <laughs> yeah, if, that, if any line is a tagline, it should be man. Yeah. Um, as far as the writing, you know, there's really no writing on a documentary, but it was, uh, uh, like we said, directed by um, uh, Chris Smith. Um, and you were saying there was something else that I've seen that he has directed. Uh, American job. I can't remember the, the yes, man, the pool. No, maybe I was just thinking about fire, fire. Yeah. Also recently that this an eight part Netflix series, the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Yeah. And he was an executive producer on tiger King. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's insane. Well, that, that kind of explains it, man. There's your roots in tiger King right there. <laughs> Carol Baskin. Carol fucking Baskin. That bitch, Carol Baskin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, uh, the music, like we said, is all Mike Shank, and the cast is all just him and his friends. You know, it's nobody you would know, obviously. Um, but you know, we'll just uh, hop into the uh, the breakdown. Um, basically, it's 1996. Uh, Mark B- Borchardt, uh, the the main focus of the documentary, is just this like he's got Joe Jobs. If you've ever seen War- Wayne's World too. Um, you know, he's got a long, a huge collection of, of, uh, name tags and hair nets. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. That's Wayne's world one. Anyways. Um, you know, come he, on, man. He, he wants to, uh, to be a filmmaker, you know, and he wants to make movies and, you know, he's unemployed frequently throughout the movie, really in debt, you know, he's an alcoholic, probably. I think it's safe to say. Um, he still lives with his parents, <laughs> you know, and he has this ex-girlfriend. He's got three kids by Alicia, um, <laughs> as Mike says it. Um, and, you know, he's he knows he's like a failure and a screw-up, but he wants to... He has this drive to like be more than he is that is just so infectious. Like you see this guy and you're just like, wow, he's he's really wanting to go places. You know, if you if he could just focus in on something and make it work, but you know, shit just goes wrong for this guy over and over again. Um and so he he tries to uh start this uh uh this he goes from doing shorts 
like short films to making like an actual film career. And he starts restarts production on a, uh, a feature length film that he was trying to get put together like for most of his adult life, like everybody in the creative community in town who are like uh, some, some of the best actors, like depictions of how I think of corny actors in this movie. Like the one guy that tells them, you know, he's like, Oh, I got to get to work on Coven. And he's like, he's like, well, you know, it's called Coven. Right. And he's like, no, Coven's the name of the Coven's Coven is the name of the movie, man. Coven, that's stupid. That's Coven sounds like oven, and that sounds like bullshit. <laughs> and so yeah, you get a you get a good piece of the Minnesota accent when he says Coven. Yeah. So he's he's doing uh, he's he's making a movie called Coven or Coven. Um, which is like a horror film. Um, I assumed he was just mispronouncing it the whole time. <laughs> but, um, you know, his, he's got this girlfriend that's trying to, you know, take custody of his kids, you know, and he's trying to get this film Northwestern made. Um, and he gets some interest from uh, some amateur actors cracking a brew doggy. Oh yeah. What you sipping on? Just the old classic light Miller. Miller L I T E. Light. Ah, goes down smooth. Um so yeah, he's he's trying to get this this movie up and up and running and he goes to these actors, he gets them uh, because he does a bunch of their radio plays and stuff. Um, and, uh, no one, you know, shows up and everything. And he's kind of upset that he, he doesn't have all the resources he needs to make this movie and stuff. And, uh, you know, go on to the next phase of actually shooting it and everything. So, um, he decides to complete, uh, Coven, uh, with the long O, Coven, uh, and it's another it's another one of his horror short shorts um, that he was shooting on 16 millimeter film in uh, 1994, but had eventually abandoned. Um, and he ends up getting some money from his uncle Bill. Uh, this he's like a retired professor or something. And he says, you know, he's got two, I got $250,000 when they ask him how much he's worth. Yeah, he said and it, should, it should be like 250 Yeah, and he's living in... Um, or 280 Yeah, something like that. But he's like 80-some years old and like he's starting to slip a little bit. But, you know, like I said, he's, his best friend is basically Mark. You know, Mark takes care of him and, you know, helps him out and hangs out with him and spends time with him. Right. So he kind of, uh, he agrees to invest and in, in help Mark out. Um, and, you know, Mark has this idea he's going to sell 3,000 VHS tapes, <laughs> which is... That's that's asking a lot, if you ask me. But uh, he in '96, uh, <laughs> there's no novelty there. <laughs> so he's uh, he's trying to sell these tapes, um, and he end, he with the end goal in mind being to get enough money to finance the movie. Um, so he gets he starts everything's rolling on Coven. Uh, you know, he's got a bunch of shit going wrong. You know, he's hardworking. He knows what he's doing. You know, surprisingly, he knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like, he actually, at the end of the day, ends up, you know, coming through and, you know, 
during this wild ride, we get to see, um, you know, highlights from, uh, from, uh, Super Bowl 31, you know, Brett Favre beating, I think it was Drew Bledsoe that time. Mm -hmm. 31. Yeah. It was the Pats. Right Right after the the Steelers. The The Steelers were the year before 30 that. yeah it was Steelers and Cowboys the year before yeah yeah so triple you know, X yeah <laughs> the rumble in the desert fucking Neil O'Donnell anyways um threw right to him twice right to him uh, that guy ended up getting MVP too Larry Brown Larry Brown, that's right. Fucking Larry Brown. Right to me through. And then twice. And then, but here's the thing though. Back to back. They lose they lose that Super Bowl. Bam Morris ends up becoming a freaking piece of shit, like drug head. Right. Like gets caught with pills or something. I forget what the story was. But then we ended up having to get Bettis. So right. that worked out. It did. Bettis was a beast. He's badass. He was. He was Jerome Badass. Yes. <sighs> Lest Anyways, we digress. Lest we digress. You know, um, living living out Super Bowl memories. So, um, yeah, Mark... Mark is, uh, you know, just getting buck wild. We get this whole side story, um, you know, along with the super, uh, fine documentary of the Packers run for Super Bowl 31. Uh, you also get to see um, Mike's friend, uh, or I'm sorry, Mark's friend, Mike. That's hard to remember. And uh, he's, you know, basically... Both of them are kind of like coping with their own addictions and stuff because um, Mike is like trying to uh, go to Alcoholics Anonymous and stuff. And he's like this compulsive gambler and stuff. But they've been friends for so long and hung out and like, you know, he's been in all his movies and stuff and he's doing the soundtrack for for this movie and stuff. So he's just this endearing, lovable little goofball. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, But he also, uh, uh, like hang, hangs out. They said at one point he hangs out with his AA sponsor and then they both go to gamblers anonymous meetings. (laughs) Right. Well, they go. They show him like going and buying lottery tickets and stuff too. Yeah. And then he's they're like, going to Gamblers Anonymous. He's like, I won fifty dollars today, and I don't want to say anything because I don't want those guys to want to borrow money. Yeah. <laughs> and like at one point, Mark's like, Mark asks him to go buy beer, and he's like, they like have a fight over it or whatever. And then, like the next scene, you see Mark drinking a beer. Yeah. <laughs> like they went and got the beer um but yeah there's there's uh you know you see you see kind of things come to a head and you see how hard he's or how hard he's willing to work to finish you know what he's trying to do with his life and actually accomplish something and stuff and like you know when you see him and his kids like sleeping in the editing room when he's got his kids and stuff it's just It's really heartwarming just to see somebody that's, you know, at least they're trying, you know? (laughs) Right. Like, at least he's putting in effort. I mean, you can't say he's not trying. Um, You know, and he ends up getting it done. It premieres at a local theater in 97. Uh, Coven. 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 And, and, uh, you know, everybody's happy that everything came out and stuff. Um, and the last scene, he goes to visit his uncle Bill and stuff and, you know, tells him about all the future fame and wealth and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of sad because, you know, 
he's 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 almost you know so far gone at the end here and stuff but you know just gives him you know a, a you get a real good send off with uncle bill i think right you know right. and then you find out you know just they put it up on the screen that he died there in uh 97 and left mark fifty thousand dollars in his will to help finance his movie right which would be more than enough i would think so because you know with how little he made coven with i mean and plus he's selling those three thousand tapes (laughs) true true hopefully northwestern gets built gets made did it ever you know, I never. I know Coven is an actual movie. Right. That's I've I've never actually um I've never actually looked up to see anything he's actually directed. You know, I just uh, I never gave it a chance. Right. Um, I mean, let me see. As far as his director credits go, he's only got. He's got five on IMDb. Coven, Big D, and the Kids Table, Deadpan Face. Okay. Uh, The Benefits of Film Freeway, uh, The Dundee Project, and Scare Me, which is announced. But those are the the movies that he's actually directed. Right. We should watch Coven. We should watch Coven. How do you watch Coven? I don't know. It's a 40-minute short drama horror. An alcohol-slash-drug abuser re-examines his life until he nearly dies from an overdose. Then a friend con- convinces him to join a self-help group, which turns out to be demonic. And you get huh. a few of the scenes through this documentary where, you know, they, they have them they're dressed up in, like, hoods around in a circle in the woods or right like the one time when they drag Mar- mark through the mud he, he was like we got to today we got to drag mark through the mud like six times in a row <laughs> <laughs> or the one scene where he's he's trying to put the guy's head through the the kitchen cabinet oh my gosh and they and score he just it keeps... in the back <laughs> <laughs> oh hell man that thing's not scored very good <laughs> yeah he punches it he's like oh man you're gonna have a headache <laughs> it's like i'm sorry i hit you that hard <laughs> yeah it's uh it's a movie that you know anytime i kind of feel like depressed about life i put this on not that i was feeling depressed about life or anything um but it's just such a it's such a fun movie to watch i think and just sit back and just watch this guy live his life and and see him you know go from like a he accomplishes a goal i mean it's a meager goal but you know just the amount of effort that he's willing to put into it um and what it means to him on a personal level you're just pulling from them from the get-go you right. know right exactly so yeah it was a good one i'll, I'll watch it again you know, thanks for introducing it to me, I'll, and I'll probably show other people as well. But if you haven't seen this and you're still listening, go watch it. It's a good, good. Yeah, film. get out of here. What are you doing, pervert? Yeah. <laughs> Stop looking at me, Swan. <laughs> I was like, I wish I had that whole, uh, that whole sound bite from Home Alone too, where he's like. Yeah. I'm going to slap you silly, you little pervert. Oh, yeah. On the talk boy. Yeah. <laughs> just so I could just, if I had any button I could push and a recording would play, it would be that. <laughs> All right, Nico. Well, yes. Not your, not your uh, typical film, but one we definitely recommend. Let's talk it out. Let's hash it out right now. What film are you wanting to review for next week. Is there one that you've been thinking of lately going, Oh, I'd like to see that. Well, I was thinking before we came on, we have three, two or three more weeks until we get to October, which October we get into the Halloween movies, right? Are we doing that? 
Yes, we can. Um, this is September seventh. We're recording this. Right. Um, you're not. You're going to get it later on this week. Um, so it's probably not the seventh that you're listening to it. Yeah. Unless you're around the corner, and I can't or see you right now. Under the desk. Under the desk. Under the desk. Behind the curtains. Ooh. Um. Yeah, I could go for. Let's see here. Let's take a look um, on our list for movies for. Yeah, They Live would be really cool for October. Have you ever seen They Live? They Live. No, I haven't. Rowdy Roddy Piper okay. stars in a movie. They Live. It's, Made... a, it's a Halloween. It's like a horror. Um. It's not a horror so much as it is an action movie. Yeah. Um, it's on stars right now. Um, but it's a, uh, a 1988 movie with, um, with Rowdy Roddy Piper shot by John Carpenter, the guy who did Halloween. Um, but it's more of like a mystery thriller sci-fi. Okay. Uh, Keith David's in it. Um, is trying this- to see. You said it would be a good one for October. Is this? Are you saying this for next week? Yeah, it's a. Okay. It's, they live. Yeah, let's do they live. Because okay. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll get this, we'll get this episode out, uh, and then we'll have what one more? Probably one. Yeah, probably one more, one or two more, depending on timing. Well, let's start getting spooky earlier. This is. This is not a horror film. It's more like a sci-fi action mystery horror kind of thing. So I think that'll be a good one. Let's get spooky. Let's get spooky. Um, In case you've never seen it, let me see if I can pull up the the trailer here. You can you can at least listen along, listeners. Uh, Let me. Get this paired real quick. That's a great sound. They are our masters! What do these things want, and why are they here? You still don't get it, do you, boy? They have recruited the rich and the powerful! They're running the whole show. Wake up! They're all about you! All around you! Blind on us to the truth! Take a look. They are safe. As long as they are not discovered. I don't know what they are or where they came from, but we gotta stop them. Stay away from me. Put these on. They have us. Look at them. They're everywhere. They're our owners. We have no other choice. I don't like this one. Leave it alone, man. So this is trailer is basically everybody telling you, look out. Some kind of I've got one that can sing. Mama don't like tattletale. <laughs> now we start <laughs> spilling some blood. Let's go! But... I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick it. And I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> John Carpenter's They Live. So the premise of the movie, basically, Nico, is that um, Rowdy Rowdy Piper rolls into this town a la Rambo style. Um, right. But he finds these strange sunglasses. And he puts these glasses on and he walks around and he notices that um, there's certain people in town that when he wears the glasses, he puts them on and he sees people for what they really are. And he sees that these, there are like alien people walking among them. Oh no. With like their faces, you know, unless he has the sunglasses, he can't see them. And, uh, you know, he starts like finding out that there's like this whole alien cabal and like all these hidden messages and stuff. Like when he looks at advertisements, it says obey. And like, 
you know, uh, do your job and stuff like that, you know, and it's, it's kind of, is this another documentary based Uh, on a true story? Yeah, it's a true story. Um, true story. Um, Rowdy, when Rowdy Piper saved the world from alien. Yeah. But there's, I remember that, I think there's that famous line. Yeah, it was, it was in all the history books. There was that famous line from that movie where he walks into the bank and he has the sunglasses on, so he looks like a badass. And he walks into this bank and he sees all these aliens and he's like, I have come here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. Click, click, and I'm all out of gum. But, uh, yeah, it's an incredible movie. Um, look forward to watching that. Like I said, it's on Stars right now. If you've got Stars, um, you can get it through Amazon as well. Uh, get Stars through Amazon. But, yeah, check this one out. This is this is going to be a fun one. Um, yeah, I'm excited. We'll check it out, and we'll meet back next week to chit-chat about it. I'm going to chitty-chat. All right, bucko. Yeah, well, Internet, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. India, we love you. India, you my boys. Yeah, it's time for the plugs. Just a reminder, check us out on Facebook.com slash Next Level Nerd for your nerd news, memes, videos, and other fun content. Be sure to uh, check out all of our other podcasts. And if you're enjoying the content we're producing for you on a weekly basis, just want to let you know you can go to patreon.com slash next level nerd. Leave us a dollar or more. Um, But if you can't support us with cash, support us by leaving us a review wherever you cast your pod. And be sure to subscribe and share the podcast with your friends and family. You can catch next week's episode when we'll review They Live. They Live. On stars. (laughs) bring, Bring your bubble gum. Bring it. Don't forget it so you don't have to kick ass. Yeah. Until next time, dear listeners, spread the word. Spread the nerd. Spread it. Spread it and forget it. Oh. Old Ronco jokes. This guy's got them all. Representing Cashmere 1-9.